Hey guys, what's up? By uh, Zach Detron here from One Half Gazette. Here with the next video. This is another base destruction video. Got a Town Hall 9 queued up for you guys. Uh, we're going to take a look at just two attacks today. But I think it illustrates a good point. Um, the second attack especially was a very well thought out plan, which I really liked. So I wanted to make sure to include it in some sort of video. And it fits pretty well. Um, this is a good base. We're going up against Chaos Hammer. I think they're... They have a lot of ex One Hive Genesis members. I'm not exactly sure what their origins are, but um, it's a good war. I think this is part of a potluck, so we're having some fun. I'm not able to be in it. I'm pretty busy right now, but I can still show um, some coverage of it. Uh, basically, let's do oops, notifications. Take a look at uh, the base layout <clears throat> and where everything is and kind of how it should be attacked, what the weaknesses are, as we do in any of these base destruction videos. Uh, so at the bottom here we have a troll Tesla. Just wanted to there we go. Just wanted to draw that in there, um, and then we have kind of a Tesla farm, a three Tesla Tesla farm right there. Um, you can see the queen's pretty separated up here. Um, so that kind of it gives you a few different options, but the base is making it difficult for you to take out the queen and also take out uh, air defenses, the uh, giant bomb locations, any of that. With, with one uh, big push, that's what any kind of offset queen base does. Very basic stuff, dates back to a while. I didn't draw in the giant bombs, they weren't that important. They're a little bit less important now that they don't do as much damage to hog riders. Maybe I should have drawn them in, but it's not. it wasn't important for either attack. So uh, the first attacker is trying to do an air attack. And when you look at this base from an air perspective, there's not a whole lot to go off of. Um, the first attacker does try to come in here with the king and the queen, and I think he wanted to get this air defense taken out as well. He doesn't get it. He didn't wait long enough to get it. He might have had a shot at it with his with his queen because the queen can reach it, but it's kind of guarded by a storage and uh, the expo, I think, can cover. So it's a little bit tricky to get in there. Um, for me, if you're doing an air attack on this base, which I don't know if I would do, first of all, because it's a lower level base, Typically, the, the ground attacks are more reliable on these bases that have the Town Hall 8 level defenses. But I mean, if you are going to go for an air attack, if that's what you're comfortable with, I would just like zap Quake this air defense. And uh, because, well, I guess on the first attack, you don't know these Teslas are here. That looks like a good plan because it's just a few cannons. I always say don't take out an air defense. Don't zap Quake it if there's too many air targeting defenses around it. I guess a good plan might be to... Uh, Sorry about that, to drop in the king right here, maybe do some tanking, uh, take out one of those Teslas as you start the air attack, use the queen trade up here, maybe drop the, a few giants, the queen, take her out. Um, something that's much less invasive. I don't think this is a good kill squad base um, for an air attack because the kill squad is going to have a lot of trouble getting the queen and one of those air defenses without having to invest a whole lot because uh, there is this little gap that separates the queen from the rest of the base. So looking at it holistically, not the best air base, but there are options. You could use a zap quake over here perhaps. Um, try to do something more air based. And the first attacker does do that to a certain extent. Um, he drops in his heroes up here. This is Christian, uh, creates a funnel, uh, wall breakers in right here, takes out the queen, Almost gets that air defense, doesn't quite get it. He kind of starts in with the Laloon, with the first Lava Hound, before he has a chance to take it out, really. One thing to add at the beginning, um, and you guys just saw a mini tip if you watched my last mini tip. Uh, basically, I, I talked about using the uh, scout balloons to come in there and see what the CC troops are. He does drop down a balloon, takes out this mortar, then drops a few more to try to lure out the CC. But it's not a good situation for two reasons. You have the air sweeper right here that's going to blow out any balloons, make it hard to trigger anything. Plus, the two closest buildings are the archer towers. Um, pretty much no, how, no matter where you deploy, even if you deploy right from this location right here, still going to be the archer towers. And because of that, he cannot lure out the CC troops. So the CC troops never go down, which is um, pretty compromising at that. But anyway, comes in with the air attack. The first lava hound, as I drew, um, starts sending more stuff in like this and so many uh, notifications, a few balloons, um, just working his way around. Surprisingly, and I think it's because the archer towers might be a little bit lower level and uh, the balloons have a slight buff, he actually gets through the majority of the base, even though the CC troops, there's like a baby dragon and I think a few wizards still left up. So they make their way through the base here, but he doesn't have enough lava hounds, um, just didn't get enough with his kill squad. He actually brings like 26 balloons and only like two or three, like three lava hounds, 
which I think is a little bit too much. You should bring four lava hounds and like 21 balloons or 20 balloons. But uh, besides that, it might not have made a difference. I think the air attack just wasn't the best choice for this base. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, the plan and the attack, um, how, it, how it exactly went. Then we'll come back here for the second attack. So here's Christian's attack. There's actually two Christians in the clan. Um, I think this is the newer Christian. It's funny because they're like the right next to each other in the war map too, so it's hard to keep track of. But anyway, you can see there the air sweeper is doing a good job guarding the CC. He's trying to get the uh, whatever's in there lured out for his heroes to take out, but doesn't get the job done. Um, 27 balloons, 3 lava hounds. I think that's going to be too much, um, especially when you don't have... The, the high like the high level archer towers or cannons but you do have the max air defenses the main threat is going to be those air defenses so i would have brought the fourth lava hound uh if i was the attacker but anyway comes in with the king the queen uh, right there the queen does aggro the king would have helped to have some wall breakers because the king has a very long journey through that level uh 10 wall he does open it up but right there he goes down it's up to the queen to take out the defensive queen luckily the barbarians tank for a little while um, but the level 30 queen, you know, she can do quite a bit. The ability, maybe a little bit early, but I think he wanted to get the, the Laloon going. So you can see the queen might have had a shot at that air defense. Probably not, though, with the expo and everything. I think that could reach. So out comes the uh, CC troops. Very unfortunate. It's like a almost an all-air targeting CC. Um, sometimes you get a Lava Hound or a Golem, but no. Baby Dragon, Archers, all that stuff in there. So goes ahead and uses those spells early, which is a good idea to get him through that first bit of the base. Um, the pups are able to help out a little bit with the CC troops, I think, but for the most part, they do go down. Uh, at the bottom there, those wizard towers just are they're total trouble. There's nothing to tank, and uh, all three of them take out quite a few balloons on their own. Uh, he has a lot of rages, though. He didn't invest like any spells in his, ki his kill squad, which was just his heroes. So he's able to invest a lot in these balloons. But at the end of the day, the balloons alone, even though they had the buff, um, they're, they're pretty much... They're not going to do anything without Lava Hounds tanking. The air defenses go go through them like butter. Uh, two shot them, I think. And then the, even the Expos, the Archer Towers, can take them down pretty fast. Not to mention the CC Troops still up. So a nice try. I think, you know, had the CC Troops gone down, might have been a little bit closer. Time still might have been an issue because I don't think much would have been left up either way. But, you know, who knows? Let's take a look at the next plan and talk about why it was a little bit more reliable. So the next attacker is uh, Ace Killer right there in the right hand corner. Ace Killer gets the three star here. Very innovative plan. I think it was much more reliable. He has, I think, level 30, 30 heroes, um, similar to the first attacker around their top level heroes. And when you have the high level heroes and you're going against a weaker base, you want to take advantage of the more reliable attack, which is going to be the ground attack and typically some kind of hog based, um, not a huge hog attack, but like a stoned hobo or something like that. That's going to be your safest play. The air attacks tend to be a little riskier. I mean, they're very popular. They do work a lot of the time. But against the lower level base, if you have the advantage of having, you know, the higher level attacking power, that's going to be your best bet most of the time, especially against a base like this that's pretty well defended against air, but um, still isn't an, um, invincible against ground attacks, which are a little more reliable, a little more powerful in some circumstances. So anyway, getting to the plan here, uh, what he does is he just, you when you're doing a ground attack, you want to protect the flanks of your of your of your kill squad. You want to go at the base in a way that you're you're moving through. Um, starting at one uh, side of the base and moving through, not creating like a, a circle of surrounding defenses around yourself. You want to take stuff out in a wave so there's nothing on your flanks. That way the golems do all the tanking. Your queen, your bowlers aren't going to be targeted. You don't want your troops to split. Um, and really what this allows him to do, this moat here, is it basically takes away any flank up here. And you'll see what he does in just a moment. Um, and there's not a whole lot down here. The wizard towers don't have much range. So if he comes at the base like this, the kill squad, the golems are going to be doing all the tanking. Um, as long as he funnels his troops in the base, that's going to be a very uh, good plan. And you'll see how he sets it up. Basically, he starts in with a few golems right here. Uh, just a tank, drops the queen down, uh, drops like a baby dragon. And he gets these two defenses. And I think his queen takes out the defensive queen, gets all of that taken out. 
And what that allows him to do is the golems will, uh, will reroute back down here because there's nothing else for them to target in the area. Then he drops in like another golem, I think, on that, or maybe a giant, something like that, on the Tesla. And the golems come all the way down to that Tesla, basically. So at this point, he's started up here and brought his troops all the way down here, which is a very, uh, very good thing to do. Show some great AI manipulation, um, getting everything moving down there. He's created a nice funnel, taken out one potential flank of his kill squad, um, sends everything in here. I think he has like a jump for right here. Uh, he has bowlers, golems, the heroes, all the typical stuff you see in a kill squad in these hog attacks. Uh, the wizard towers aren't much of an issue. They can't reach the kill squad and just comes through the base uh, really strong. Gets very deep with his kill squad. Uh, sends a few hogs in here. Just works his way around the base basically. Uh, 14 hogs, maybe a little bit more. Something around uh, there. Not a ton of hogs, but enough that they're able to take out the parts that his kill squad can't reach. So a very uh, well done attack. Well, I couldn't be that specific because I didn't watch it. Um, I watched it like 20 minutes ago. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it now and talk through it. All right, so he starts off the attack, uh, this dominion down there, right here, a wizard. Um, he's going to start with the golems in just a moment and just get the, uh, he's taking a little bit of HP off his golem, but that's the price he has to pay to take out this little compartment up here, um, which is fine. He doesn't need all that HP, especially uh, considering the fact that uh, this base doesn't have max defenses. So drops down that golem. I like the poison on the queen just to slow down that damage. I think it's, you know, maybe only about... 50 60 percent the damage she typically does the baby dragon very well done uh, for two reasons it takes out the queen and it gets that archer tower which otherwise wouldn't have gone down the queen can't reach it um the wizard can't reach it obviously so the baby dragon's instrumental in that attack uh, he actually only has to use one golem it's able to survive the entire uh onslaught there the queen takes out that archer tower which allows everything to reroute even further down Keeping in mind there's nothing else in that compartment. If there was like an archer tower where that gold storage would have been, the golem would have stayed on the wall. You got to, you know, be sure your golems are going to reroute, that the compartment is completely clear. Uh, that's typically what it needs to re uh, reroute down to somewhere else. So anyway, it opens up the wall breakers uh, into that wall right there. The queen does get targeted by a Tesla, um, so he has to pop the ability, but no big deal. She'll get back behind the golems in just a moment. Uh, the king coming in, the bowlers, very... Uh, late deployment, which I think was good to some extent. It's a little bit risky if you wait too long because anything that would lead them into the base, those breadcrumbs, so to speak, uh, get taken out. So they'll be more likely to walk. So you want to do it right in the middle when there's enough left up for them to target the base. Has that heal, which I like him deploying on the bowlers. Sometimes people save it for the hogs, but I think that was a good choice, especially because he has another heal left over. Might as well use one on those bowlers. Keep them up inside the base. They do a ton of damage when they're like right in the middle and it can get that second bounce in some of those defenses. Um, doesn't even need to use that next heal spell because the hog deployment was very nice. Kind of a surgical around the base. Uh, worked out awesome. Troll Tesla at the bottom, which... Uh, I think he knew about, I'm not sure, it didn't look like he had a plan for that, but a few troops just kind of wander down there and take it out, and then just a few trash buildings up top. I uh, hope you guys liked the video, hope you learned something. Basically, um, these types of bases that have the queen kind of offset in like a moat around her, um, it really opens up good opportunities to do a, a kill squad based attack, because you can... Uh, be sure your flanks aren't going to be taken out. The funneling is very easy. Nothing's going to stray up north if you come in from the side here. So it allows you to, to use those golems and get some great value from them. Uh, that's going to do it. Hope you guys liked it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, Sectatron out.